Hey, Dawn here. Here's Lick of the Day number 52. This is a B melodic minor picking lick. As usual, you can find the link to the tabs in the description below or by clicking here on the screen. I'm going to play the whole thing once, slowly, and then break it down. We start here on the 16th fret of the G string. Right. This is based on the B melodic minor scale and you can view the B melodic minor scale as a bit of a more upbeat harmonic minor scale. And if you don't know what a harmonic minor scale is, it's basically a natural minor scale with a, a natural seventh. So you go one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, seven to get that neoclassical sound. Uh, and the melodic minor, you play exactly the same thing, but you also uh, raise the flat 6 back to the natural 6th. So you have 1, 2, flat 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. Uh, one way to view it is like a major scale with a flat 3. But for me that doesn't make any sense because it's not a major scale, so I'd rather look at it from the point of view of the minor scale. But pattern-wise it's the same, so if you feel that you're like, well I really know my major scales, and if you can find the third note of each position of that major scale and you lower that a half step, you basically get, get the, the melodic minor scale from the, in that key. But I would rather have you view this as a, as a minor scale with a natural 6th and a natural 7th. Alright, so the lick starts here with this sequence I've played a bunch of times before and I call it the Yngwie sequence. But if you look back in the history of music, you probably can trace this back to, to Bach and, and those guys back in the day. But anyhow, Yngwie is the way that I, that's where I discovered it myself. So if, we number, if you're not familiar with the sequence, if we take the, the first string here, so we have um, uh, the G string and we're going to play 13, 15, 16. If we number the, the notes from left to right, it's not the fingerings, so we've got 1, 2, 3. Uh, the sequence goes like this, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. So, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. Uh, and I'm going to start this one with a downstroke and an alternate picket. Um, the next string will be the B string. And we'll play exactly the same fingering, so this sort of 1, 3, 4 pattern. Uh, but it's going to be one string up and one fret down. So, just take this whole sort of package, move it one string up and then one fret down. Uh, and if you get confused when I say up and I move down, sort of towards the floor, uh, I always think about music in pitch, and this is up pitch-wise, where it's actually down, if, you know, if you look at it from just a up and down perspective, but pitch-wise, we're moving up. So that makes more sense to me. All right, so again, this sequence, repeat that, one string up, one fret down. Then we move it up to the uh, E string and now we're going to play 10, 12, 14. The same type of sequence. I tend to use 1, 2, 4 most often when I have uh, whole steps, but you can also do 1, 3, 4 if you want to go the way of Paul Gilbert. I use that sometimes as well, depends on the fingering before and after, but for this one I believe I played 1, 2, 4, so it doesn't really matter. Now it's pretty easy here uh, to remember because you just move up uh, the whole thing so you have the, the index finger where you have your second finger and everything is the same so because it's all whole steps here. So you do the same thing from 12, 14, 16 and then you do that once more so you have, uh, you're going to have 14, 16, 18. So all this stuff is almost like a whole tone scale. So, and now we ended up here on the root, and now I'm going to go down uh, three positions of the B minor arpeggio here. So we're going to go 19, 14, 15, 16, and then we're going to start here, 14, 10, 12, 11, and then finally we have 10, 7, 7, 7, and end up on the root. 
here on the ninth fret of the D string. So. And the way that I picked this, I'm coming from a down stroke. So down, pull off, up, up, down, pull off, up, up, down, pull off, up, up, up. And rhythmically, uh, this will even out as you reach this point because you have 12 notes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then end on 13 or the downbeat again. So, since this is all sixes, you basically get uh, uh, it's groups of four here, but rhythmically we're still playing six notes. But I think it's easier to, to just try to keep the timing as even as possible and then make sure you land on the beat here. But if you want to figure out exactly where the beat should land, you can just count it out. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. So keep that in mind if you feel confused. One thing about this when you practice this slowly, which I highly suggest that you do. First of, first of all, you can just start uh, looping any of these uh, shapes, preferably the one you have the biggest problem with. But if you start here, for example, you can make sure to uh, plant the pick as you do the pull off here. So you go down, pull off, and as this note, exactly when this note sounds, you sync it up by planting the pick. So you basically, I'm um, above the B string here, or below it, depending on you know, if you think pitch wise or uh, up and down wise. So, but I'm basically in between the B and E string on that side of the, of the string. Uh, and the reason for this is it makes it way easier for your brain to, to know exactly where to be at all times, because otherwise you're gonna have this type of problem where you go down, pull up, and you're just waiting, and then you have to move really quickly to get to this point. Uh, but if you make sure to do this when you play it slowly, you can program that into your technique. So when you speed it up, it will, if you've done enough reps and correctly, it will work for you as well. So, all right, so practice wise, besides the whole arpeggio thing that I showed you here, uh, basically just make sure you can play the single string version of this. on each string. And then, you know, uh, if you can't, well, then you, you keep working on that. And then you can also start moving between each position. So you go. Or if you want to go to the actual beat. So there's a bunch of different ways you can do this, but I think it's a good idea to, to work on the lick as it is, but if you find that you have an issue with uh, this pattern, I would just chuck this pattern into your overall practice routine and do it with a lot of slow, perfect reps. Because that's the way to really improve your technique over time. Also a quick thing about learning in general, I found that it's best to move on after you reach a certain point of a lick. Either you can play it, or if you spend, you know, however much time you feel that it's reasonable and you still can't play it up to speed, maybe you, you, you only get, you know, 70, 80% there. I would move on if you feel that you don't really get any, any more improvement that you can see if you spend a few days on it. Uh, because I used to do this sort of intuitively, uh, so I would learn something, and then I would learn it up t until I re reached that point of like frustration, like I can't get it any faster than this, uh, if it was a speed thing, for example. And then I would simply uh, move on and learn something else, and usually it would be something maybe a bit similar, but maybe even a bit harder. And that working on that thing would help the previous thing. Uh, so if you think of it like um, the sort of 80-20 rule, so uh, it will take you 20% to learn 80% of a lick, but then you have to spend the remaining 80% learning the remaining 20%. Uh, 
And that can be very frustrating uh, to do that. And I think you're better off moving on from that thing and learning something else that's you know, not completely, uh, totally separate from the thing that you worked on. But if, you learn, if you're working on a picking thing like this, maybe you will move on to some other picking thing. Uh, so you can actually learn something new, but you're still working on the same type of technique. And that will gradually start to fill in the, the remaining 10 to 20% uh, of the previous lick. So if you approach things like that, it's less frustrating and you will learn more things over time. So if you just can release that thing where like, ah, I'm, you know, I get a lot of DMs from people like, oh yeah, I worked on this lick and uh, I, I only got it up to 110 BPMs, but it's, it's supposed to be 120 or 125. But especially for, for the licks that I post here, it's just whatever tempo I did that day. So it's not that exact and, and doesn't really matter. Uh, if, if you can get it up to, you know, 80, 90%, you're good, you can move on. And, and then you're, you're much better off learning something new during that time instead of just sitting there trying to grind out, you know, the, the remaining 10, 20% because the only gain would be some extra speed and you can build that speed by learning new things and upping your technique that way. And the benefit of doing that is you, you're gonna learn a lot of new things because you could probably take a lick that, you know, and you get to 70, 80% of the speed, if that's what you're going for. And then you can just grind it out and spend, you know, eventually you will get there. But at, at what cost? That's what you have to ask yourself. Is it really worth you just grinding out on this lick for maybe months uh, where you could, you could spend that time and learn so much more? in that time while still upping your technique so you can actually play the thing that you you know were working on so i think if you had problems with this you know grinding out and reaching a specific goal i would advise you to just move on and learn something else that's sort of in the same vein but maybe even a bit harder and then you'll find that when you come back to the previous thing you're probably way closer to getting it to 100 percent. so working on it for that last uh, little bit makes sense or you maybe you will realize that oh i can actually play this now even though you didn't actually practice that thing specifically so i would rather have you do that so and if you want if you feel like that well that's a bit feels flaky well just make sure that you, you keep learning new things and but you let's say you have a you practice for an hour for for this type of stuff like learning new licks or, or songs or whatever i wouldn't spend more than maybe five, 10 minutes on the thing that you, you sort of get stuck at, do that then, but then spend most of your time learning new things. And I think you'll find that's much more rewarding and it's much more fun in the long run. So give it a try if you have trouble and been, you know, been frustrated with this kind of stuff before. All right, that's it for this one. If you made it this far, please like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff that really helps the channel. And the more the channel can grow, the more time I can devote to the channel. So it will help us all in the long run. If you have any questions, just post them below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this one and see you in the next one.